Welcome back to the second part of this tutorial. In the first part, we've seen how to import spatial data into R, um, especially uh, raster data and vector data with the packages Terra and SF. Uh, secondly, we've seen how to extract a, a training and test set from uh, spatial uh, data, satellite data. Um, we've seen how to uh, set up a model with uh, MLR3 how to set hyperparameters, how to train and predict um, new data from, from that model, uh, for example, an entire satellite scene. And we've seen um, how to uh, assess models by performing uh, cross-validation. And um, at last, um, we've seen how to uh, assess sim the, the importance of uh, single features in the model. Now the second script is for automatizing the task from the first one. So we use the functions we've already defined, uh, but boil together to uh, functions we can iterate for each year we want to predict for. So for the years 2016 and 17. At first we load the packages, um, as uh, shown also in the first script. We load the helper file containing all the paths. Then we import uh, the data, or we, we query uh, the data on the disk. We can look into that file and we see all three dates, 2015, 16, and 17, in NV stack files. We import the layer names as well, and then we import the data uh, in a vectorized manner. That means that we iterate over all. Um, paths we have um, found on the disk and load it separately and store it into uh, a variable called rasters uh, containing three raster files um, in all three slots of the list. And we can see that is three rasters inside. Now we import the training data again. That's the same step as we've seen before, containing the different land cover types and slung bush areas. So in this function, we extract all the training and test sets for all three years. So this returns a list of length three again. So for each year, 2015 to 17, one list entry of extracted satellite data. Now we select uh, only the uh, Slangbosch class that is false true. That's what we've done in the script before as well to only classify based on the existence of Slangbosch or not. If you want to perform a multi class analysis, um, I've uh, supplied also the function to um, only select the, the, the land cover variable. In this section, we find a large function. Don't be scared of the size, but it makes it uh, far more convenient to iterate, to, to loop through all the uh, years we have, so all the data instances we want to model for. So at first, we uh, uncomment this block here. That is not uh, necessary, but for um, showing you um, how the um, variables inside the function work, uh, we um, sub subset all the, the um, we input, um, we select input data for the function before. So uh, we take the first year, 2019, the first training set, we have the learner ID, uh, the random forest algorithm, and the target variable Slangbosch. We have the coordinate uh, reference system and the out file for the data and a list of hyperparameters we want to input. These are all variables we can input in a function. And as we see later, uh, we can iterate over these. But now using these variables, we can go into that script. So at first we um, start a task. We call it automate in this case, but the idea is basically arbitrary in that case. We have the backend data, that's a training set and the target variable. 
and we can look in how the task looks like here. We have again the target variable slungbosh, all the variables in the model, and the coordinates. In the next step, we define a learner. That's the random forest learner. We can print it, we can uh, assess what is inside this uh, learner um, and what the learner is capable of. We set the hyperparameters. Um, these can be tuned um, in another step, but it's not part of the course. You can look on the uh, resources on MLR3 or on the MLR3 book. There's a lot of information on hyperparameter tuning um, that is more important in when using other mm, machine learning algorithms than random forest, for example. Then we train the learner. We use the new data to predict. And what is now the output of this georeferencing function is a raster that contains the response variable and the probability maps. Basically, now it's just written out on the file on the on the disk. Now we can uh, comment this block again. We don't need it anymore because we are, will iterate over these um, settings here. So we um, load in this function. In this block, we only um, make new file names so that new files can be written to the disk that have a different name than the incoming files. Using that function, model and save, we now run that chain we de we've defined above. We can see all the command, um, command line outputs here. So it's really easy to assess if everything went fine or not. You can see the sample size and the hyperparameters we've set, and also a random forest specific um, error measure where we can assess if the model is, is good or not. So now we um, iterate over all the years with this function pmap. pmap is like map but takes a list of arguments and iterates over each of them. So we iterate over the rasters. So the, the new incoming, the whole satellite scene. We iterate over the training sets of each year and iterate over the out files. This can take now a second to run. That was an error, but I think yeah, it should run. Now all three years are predicted and already saved to, to disk. When this is finished, we can quickly visualize that with the plot function, the native R plot function. Now on the right hand side, we see the response um, layer random forest produced for each year. This is starting with 2015, 16, and 17. We already see uh, some dynamics in that. But in the next uh, script, we will see how to visualize that more um, yeah, appropriately and also go into QGIS to make uh, some fancy maps.